Number nine, which of the following nuclei lie within the band of stability? And then we have calcium 40. Okay, so I have a picture of the band of stability on the left side, just in case we need it. But in order to find out whether we're in the band of stability, always know how many protons and neutrons you have in your atom. So the easiest way to do this is to write it out into that notation. We have a calcium, Ca. Anytime that you have a number next to your letter, uh, not your letter, but your element, this is always referencing the atomic mass or, you know, mass number, whatever, whichever one you want to say. So we'll say, um, yeah, atomic, I guess we'll say atomic mass. Now just know that your atomic mass are your protons plus your neutrons. So we know that we have 40 in total. The 40 goes up on the top. Now the number on the bottom is always going to be the atomic number. And the atomic number is always the number of protons. But how are we going to find out what that number is? Well, get your periodic tables out because um, every number for an atomic number is unique to an element. And if I look on my periodic table, I see that calcium has a number 20. So we definitely know that we have 20 protons. And how would we find out the neutrons? Well, if we know that we have 40 total protons plus neutrons, and 20 of them are going to just the protons, I could subtract these two numbers. 40 minus 20 is 20. So we have 20 neutrons. Now let's see, with an atom that has 20 protons, 20 neutrons, would this be stable? That's what it means to be in the band of stability. Is it a stable isotope? Well, the first thing is always know your magic numbers. There are seven of them. If either a proton value or a neutron value has a magic number, then it is stable. And if it's got both magic numbers, then it's really stable. It's special. So in this case, both of them, I see that we got 20s, 20s all around, double magic. So we know that this compound is it going to be in the band of stability? Absolutely yes. So in this case, we didn't even need the chart. But maybe sometimes, you know, other examples, we might need to use that chart. But if you have a magic number, then just use that. So there you go. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. And I look to be talking to you in future lessons. We also have memberships on the channel. So if you want to become a member, you totally can. Um, so yeah, check it out and I'll be talking to you soon. Bye-bye.